I just want to preface this entire video series by saying that the development history of this game is wild and everything that I say that is directly addressed to the development team is meant in a tongue-in-cheek manner. I'm being cheeky, not spiteful. All of my actual criticisms are levied at the art that they have created, not the people themselves. Game developers are incredibly talented, hard-working people and I have mad respect for each and every one of them. And this applies to every single game in this series, not just Origins. I've said before that my problem with the Silent Hill series from this point onwards doesn't really lie with the creatives behind it, and it was more Konami stifling their creativity. But everything except for Homecoming. I feel like this needs some preamble before I get into the development history and the usual commentary because we're into the Western developed Silent Hill games now and they have left a... a legacy, shall we say. It's no secret that I don't have much love for the rest of this series. When I started these playthroughs I planned to stop at 4, but I think it'll be interesting at this point just to see it through. Besides, I'm not blind to good writing and good game design. I haven't played most of these games in a really long time and I've only ever played each of them once before, so... A lot of this is going to be me giving them another chance and giving myself another chance to like them. I'm not going to go in trying not to like them because that's stupid and that's uninteresting. So how will I be judging this game? Well, as a Silent Hill game, because that's what it says on the box, that's what was sold to me. And I will be comparing it to what came before. There's this notion you hear sometimes that individual entries in a franchise need to be judged separately on their own merits, and I just don't agree with that. It's a sequel in a long-running cycle of games. There's a template already that they can base it off of and learn from the previous entries' successes and failures. That's the great thing about iteration. When done well, the series gets better with each entry. That said, I'm going to be as fair as I can. I'm going to meet these games in the middle and try not to argue in bad faith. I'll judge what's here and how it compares to what came before. If I can think of solutions to the problems I present, I will offer them, purely because it's interesting to learn from another project's mistakes and it makes for an interesting discussion. But I won't discredit a game just because it didn't have the same ideas that I had, with the benefit of hindsight, made completely out of context of the development challenges. I don't think it's fair when people do that. Besides, I might end up liking them more than I remember. That's what's happened with Silent Hill 4. Okay? Okay. Silent Hill 4 was released in 2004. It had mixed reactions upon its release. It's one of those games that's gotten a warmer reception as time goes on, and sensibilities have changed. But I guess maybe because of the early reception, Konami decided that all new Silent Hill games would be developed by Western Studios. Enter Climax Studios Los Angeles, the next people to work on a Silent Hill game. The game was announced at E3 2006. I remember it well. It looked fucking awful. Climax LA fucked it up so bad that Climax ended up shutting down the LA studio and all the projects and assets got transferred over to Climax Studio in the United Kingdom. That's right, it's a Silent Hill game made in the Blighty! So, Mr. Sam Barlow? Yeah, that Sam Barlow, the guy who recently wrote and directed Immortality, one of the best received indie games of 2022, was assigned writer and director of this game. He said in an interview that what they had inherited was bizarre. It was this barely working mess of a more action-oriented, over-the-shoulder, Resident Evil 4 type game. 
whose story was a dark comedy inspired by the TV show Scrubs for some reason, and this new UK team was tasked with finishing it. But they knew if this game released, then it would have been a disaster. There's no way the fans would have accepted it. They had to completely scrap the whole thing and start again, which Konami did agree to under some conditions. They had to meet the same deadline, and they wouldn't be given any more money. They had to use the same budget, half of which had already been spent. Sam was thinking at the time, aren't Silent Hill games usually really good? He and the team, they did not want to be the people to make the first bad Silent Hill game. Which is unfortunate because they did, but let's be real here, let's summarise. Climax UK had to make a Silent Hill game, nearly from scratch, with half the money they would have had otherwise, in six months. Just let that sink in. <laughs> Sam Barlow had one week to complete the script, design the initial concept for the levels and design the creatures. The rest of the time I imagine was most likely spent in perpetual crunch for the remainder just rushing this thing out. What a shitty deal. There was one delay from a 2006 release to its eventual North American release on November 6th 2007, a full three years after Silent Hill 4. It was later ported to the PlayStation 2 in 2008, but I'm going to be playing the PSP version because I want to experience its original release. I own both versions, and the PS2 update definitely is the graphically superior one in terms of fidelity, though it doesn't quite reach the heights of Silent Hill 3 and 4. But they really messed up the brightness, you can't see anything. So that's the development history of this game, let's see how they did. This is Silent Hill Zero Origins. And today's episode is brought to you by the word continuity, because I'm Sam Barlow, and I apparently have no idea what that means. up some bitch what you doing on my road well hit on a gig bud i'm taking the shortcut past silent hill stop up for coffee as soon as i hit brahms i'm beat bad dreams still keeping you awake i told you man a girl or two would go a long way sleep like a baby with a chick in your cab guess i just don't meet the right girls bud maybe if you weren't always blabbering about losing your parents when you were young how you don't even remember how why hey chill you don't see me bringing up your issues. <laughs> no need. My old lady keeps me fully informed of my feelings. The girl keeps notes. You mean she hasn't left you yet? <laughs> Any day now. See you around, Travis. Take it easy. 10-4. Catch you later, buddy. Thank you. 
Huh? Hey, come back. Welcome to Silent Hill Origins. They've already made a continuity error. So in Silent Hill 1, it was established that Alessa was burned by the cult in an accidental fire. In a ritual where they tried to bring about the birth of their god. She was then taken to the basement of Alcamilla Hospital and left there for seven years, unable to die during which time she split her soul into two, manifesting a baby on the side of a road that was found by King Harry and his wife. They took this baby in and named her Cheryl. Because of this split, the god could not be born, so Dahlia, Alessa's mother, kept her in a perpetual state of pain and suffering and used a summoning spell to bring Cheryl back. Once in the vicinity of Silent Hill, Cheryl ceases to exist and instead becomes an astral projection of Alessa. Because Alessa's latent powers are now triggered, forcing her unconscious onto the real world. Which Alessa is now taking measures to stop by spreading the seal of Metatron around the town. Yeah? Remember? So, who the fuck was that little girl that Travis just saw? Because it sure as shit wasn't Alessa. The entire reason Travis has stopped here can't actually have happened. Am I going to be like this for the entire playthrough? Yes, I'm sorry, but yes. This one directly touches established lore, characters, locations and events. I'm kind of against making a prequel to the first game conceptually because it's already explained itself more than enough. And I really wish they'd have done something else. Am I going to be like this for the entire series of playthroughs moving forward? Nah, probably not. Maybe once or twice in Homecoming. Oh, another complaint? They've moved the run button. <laughs> the run button is a different button now. Welcome to Silent Hill. Someone's in there. So this must be the boiler explosion fire, which puts this game exactly seven years before the events of Silent Hill 1. Keep that in mind for when I'm whining later. That's a weird button. <laughs> There's a picture of Pyramid Head on the wall. There's something to this painting. Maybe she want to stop and look. This isn't the time though, and it's going to burn just like the others. Dahlia and Alessa. You're coming with me.
she uses little halos of the sun to clear the fire. I don't know why that why that annoys me so much, but it does. She also did just request to be left alone to burn, so I don't know why she's helping us now. Like, Alessa doesn't want to birth the god. She wants to die. That's kind of her entire plan. Safe now. Hey, someone help her. Where is everyone? Let me just put your fourth degree burn open wounds in the dirt. <laughs> now you're safe. Taken her to the hospital. Coon Street. I need to see if she's okay. So one of the big objectives for the development team is that they wanted it to feel closer to Silent Hill 1, which is admirable. They're using the same map here too, with a bit, with a bit of an expansion to it down on the south end. Some of the additions are just weird though but you know we'll get to that <laughs> i actually like how this game looks visually especially since it's a psp game as well it sounds great too akira yamaoka comes back to do the music he's the only returning original member of team silent that come back My only complaint about the visuals in the town, like this looks great right now, but when you kind of go like here, is that you can see too much of the sky, which is a weird complaint I know, but it, it removes a lot of the claustrophobia. It makes the frame like really bright and open. It's good to be back in old Silent Hill again. Like it looks the part for sure. Even got Konami Burger. We have M Metal Gear Solid boxes. <laughs> or is that just MSGs? That's MSG. I read that as MGS. They missed. They missed a trick there. I think. No more limited invent inventory from Silent Hill Four. There's a lot of things that aren't from Silent Hill 4. <laughs> With my job, I spend a lot of time on the road at night. When something goes wrong, it's good to have this thing strapped to my jacket. Handy when I'm unloading my rig. Tunes tend to keep the, tend to keep the boredom at bay. I've had this quarter since I was a kid, from when my parents died. It's kind of a lucky charm. And there's something scratched onto it. Looks like 61. My parents are dead. I'm so lucky. Also, did you hear the sirens? And can you see the fog? It's all arrived seven years early.
pest control. That's quite clever. Because on Silent Hill 1 you fight the giant moth up on top of that building. So that's, that's quite a clever nod. I like that. Get used to seeing him snap into position a lot too. Unfortunately, it has the same problem as Silent Hill 4, where there's no tank controls. It's actually worse in this game because the camera like snaps into view like that. Silent Hill 4 didn't really do that. Get used to him being out of breath as well. He does it a lot. <laughs> Alkin Miller Hospital! Amber Labs! It all looks the part, doesn't it? Just some magazines. And here's our save point. Triangles. <laughs> oh no, the, the screenshot's broken. My original hardware PSP is not working correctly. I don't have any change. Who would I call anyway? That guy you were talking to at the opening. Doctor, can I help you? That fire last night. The girl who was burned. Is she here? A girl? We've received no new patients in the last day or so. Was she hurt? She was burned all over. Are you a relative? What did you say her name was? I don't know her name. I was the one who saved her from the fire. She must have been brought here. Is there another hospital? I'm sorry. Perhaps someone in reception could help you. I have urgent business to attend to. Goodbye. Kaufman age is like 30 years and 7 years. <laughs> Dahlia does too. We meet Lisa later and she's the opposite where she ends up aging backwards between this game and Silent Hill 1. And she acts like a totally different person in this game too. I guess that I guess you can call that growth, right? That's character growth. <laughs> I really I mean we'll get to it, but I really dislike what they've done to Lisa in this game. Dirty gurney. Someone just left it here?
I guess this nurse wandered all the way over here from Brookhaven Hospital because that's the uniform she's wearing. <laughs> all the way out of James's subconscious too. So again, the nightmare hasn't been unleashed on the town yet full scale, or shouldn't have been anyway. That's like seven years from now when Harry visits. It's pretty heavily hinted at in the dialogue of the first game that when you get, that when you get there, all that crazy shit's only just started happening. But I need to get over that for the sake of the rest of this game, otherwise I'm just going to be repeating it over and over again. So it's a retcon, I guess. Alyssa has inadvertently projected her nightmare onto the town already. That had to happen so this game could happen and this story could be told. Okay, but why the Brookhaven nurses? Silent Hill 1 had nurses, the ones with those parasites on their backs, had doctors too. Why did they not use those? That would have made so much more sin sense because they are Alessa's monsters. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to represent Travis's repressed sexual urges because he's a trucker or something. It's Muddy whose nightmare we're actually seeing here. It's possible we're seeing both, I guess. I'm pretty sure that's what was going on in Silent Hill 3 with Alessa and Claudia. Even so, if they're going to stick to Silent Hill 1 in terms of atmosphere and design, like they said was one of their goals, then they should have stuck to Silent Hill 1. looking a bit different on the other side of the mirror. Preliminary diagnosis. Third degree burns. Patient is, patient is unconscious. Something has prevented damage spreading to the internal organs. Tissue damage is limited to the epidermis and extremities of limbs. How is this possible? I guess that's about our friend Alessa. The gurney is stained with blood. Some of it still seems wet. There's something wrong with the mirror. The reflection isn't right. Bunch of medical pamphlets, tropical diseases, baby vitamins, flu shots, that kind of stuff. isn't right. It's okay, because you can just do this. See? And now you're fine again. <laughs> They're doing the whole light world, dark world mechanic that Nintendo loved for a while. The mechanic is solid. It worked really well in Soul Reaver 2 when they did it, but the implementation of it here is pretty basic. We'll see. Like, it's fine, but from a lore perspective, it's kind of, what? This isn't how the other world works at all. <laughs> I guess it's a clever way of padding the game out, though. Having only six months to make it and all, but a lot of the time it does kind of just feel like a crutch that they use. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. From a gameplay perspective, it's fine, but from a story lore and most importantly horror perspective, it doesn't really work for me because you can swap back out of the other world. And most of the horror from the other world especially in the first game, came from the unknowable aura around it and the fact that you're trapped there. It's not as effective as if you can just, you know, leave. I got some plastic lungs! And a scalpel! One thing we haven't seen yet is how 
how many weapons you can end up carrying. <laughs> it's a bit absurd. You actually get two maps, one for each, which is nice. Helps you figure things out a bit easier. broken washing machine soundtrack again. I like the soundtrack of this game quite a lot actually. It's not Yamaoka's best or most memorable work but it is good. It's definitely one of the highlights of the game. I don't think he's phoning it in, phoning it in quite yet. Again they wanted this game to be closer to Silent Hill 1 in tone and yeah I think they I think they nailed that. I think it looks really good as well. It sounds amazing and it looks really good. I'm a huge fan of PSP graphics too though because they hit like this, this frame right now. Let's go in here where there's more stuff. I mean, look at this game. <laughs> this, this hits the exact sweet spot for me of fidelity. Like aesthetically, especially for a game like this. Like if we ever start soliloquy up again, I want to aim for a fidelity like this. It looks great. It's like peak low poly for me. This is, it's just so, it's so crunchy. I love it. So it looks like a Silent Hill game. It looks a lot like a Silent Hill game. It sounds a lot like a Silent Hill game. It plays a lot like a Silent Hill game. So what could what could I possibly have to complain about? golden egg. Worry not, I have used the blah to contain her power. No one will come to her aid. One of the five blah, protect, hide them, protect them, keep them secret, keep them safe. This plastic organ is a replica of a set of human lungs. Warm to the touch, the egg is larger than a hen's and has an oily shine to it. Charge up attacks too. Yeah. Oh, I missed. So that damaged me quite a bit. I missed so many rooms. Got distracted by Nursey. I'm going to be turning off my flashlight a lot because that that used to be the run button. 
I got a portable TV, which is a weapon. <laughs> he just he just straight up pulls a portable TV out of his pocket. This heart of mine troubles me with its trembling. To still it, I have put it on ice and locked it away. Remember the three beauties who can, can cause it to pump. That's who caused it to pump so are the key this is a really hard font to read remember the three beauties who pause it to pump so are the key age before beauty options can I like there we go it's like the loudest game ever as well that's better Television. Uh, oh. <laughs> and now I've dropped my television forever. That was a one hit that was one usage. Eh. Hit hit. Oh no, my scalpel broke. Punch her in the face. I mean, his guns are pretty good to be honest. <laughs> can just punch things to death pretty easily. So you saw it. There's quick time events now too. I'd rather they weren't here, but that's definitely not a hill I'm willing to die on. I spoke at length already about what I think of the gameplay of these games. There's a death mask on the door. Underneath is a plaque which reads, even the blind have needs of eyes if they wish to gaze at the future. So they keep trying different ideas with the combat to see if they can make it work, and that's fine. Again, if it were me, I'd mix three and four's combat together, but I've already explained my des my preferred design for a combat in a style of game like this. trouble with your anatomy class? Find that getting them out is much easier than putting them back in. Just remember the easy mnemonic. Inside Stevie, little Henry lurks. Got me a plastic liver. Have I explored everywhere now? No, I've got one more bathroom to go. Amy, 31, I wish. I need to go to the staff lounge. Where's that? 
this away. My toaster, my exam room key, got an energy drink which recovers stamina, oh textbooks and reports and magazines, nothing I need. Construction! As you know, the renovations to the upper floors have run into problems. The plumbing leak and substandard materials use to force us to close off the third floor until further notice. We are reminded of the familiar adage. Get what you pay for. We now face six more months of work, reducing our capacity for the coming year. We'll have to cut spending on inpatient care and consultancy fees by 50%. Therefore, we ask doctors to refrain from committing patients and encourage home stays instead. Unless they're dying in your arms, don't book them in. Staff party! Worry not, the staff party is still on. Our recreation budget is locked away where no one can tamper. Everyone meet at Annie's bar at 8pm on Friday. Alcohol, medicinal of course, and food will be free. Arrive early to grab a trainee nurse. They go quick. Lucy, 23. Sarah, 19. Got plastic intestine. Got a stomach. What we don't have yet is a heart. But I know where to get one. How they have the little note to say that they've locked away the third floor. Nice little way of explaining why the first floor isn't accessible. Because you gotta you gotta keep in the back of your head this is a PSP game. It's also really dark so I'm probably gonna turn the brightness up. that even save? That doesn't seem to have made a difference. That did save. So we just need to reorganize the beauties or the nurses. And remember, age before beauty. So 30... This is really awkward. 31, 23, 19. Oh, my face. Alcohol bottle, you cow! Damn, I'm taking lots of damage.
Oh, I missed. Not dying yet. to the exam room. I mean, it's inside Stevie Little Henry looks, but I'd hope that I know <laughs> basic human anatomy. Intestine. Stomach. Liver. That's the heart. <laughs> it does not look like a heart. Liver. Heart. Lungy boys. And then you get creepy eyes. I got some glass eyes. What else are you looking at? See, this is just like, this is a good sounding game. A really good sounding game. I'd argue it sounds better than Silent Hill 4. Time to react. Out of supplies already. Good thing I got a toaster. All I have is a toaster. And a TV. Is that it? No other weapons for me? open and the eyes are missing. What kind of monster could have done this? What do you, who do you think? Who do you think? It was you, Travis. 
this is where the other puzzle was. And that's it. That's quite a nice detail. I do like that. It's, it's creepy little details. Quite clever. Okay, with me and my trusty scalpel, let's head into the medicine room. Or not, <laughs> as the case may be. The lying figure represents the team's need to put a recognisable enemy type in the game. Because do you remember Silent Hill 2? We're not going to let you forget Silent Hill 2. I got the future piece, a little triangle boy. What is this? You. What was that thing? This isn't happening. Are you okay? Sorry, did I startle you? My name is Lisa. I'm a trainee here. Are you waiting for someone? No. No, I'm just... Well, I'm done here. Name's Travis. Nice to meet you, Lisa. You sure you're okay? You look a little shaken up. Sorry. No, it's okay. To be honest, I've been a little off all day. I was in a fire last night. I think it boiled my brain a little. The fire in the business district? How awful. I heard about that. No one knows how it got started. And that poor girl, Alessa Gillespie, to die like that. Alessa? She died? Yes. Sorry, did you know her? No. But... Never mind. Well, I have to run. Dr. Kaufman wants to meet me over at Cedar Grove Sanitarium, and he'll be mad if I'm late. Maybe see you around? Take it easy, Travis. You too, Lisa. So I guess Alessa's doing all of this on purpose. <laughs> Her body language kind of made that apparent to me, which I guess is another blow to continuity and her entire character. Like Alessa's a good person and all of this that she created, she created by mistake. It was an accident. She didn't mean to do all of this. And in Silent Hill 1, she's trying and failing to stop it from spreading. So... There's that, <laughs> but we'll leave it there for this episode, because that is the hospital done. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.